Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today is a fantastic day. I'm so excited to interview one of my best friends, Kyle Boyd. He's been a huge supporter of the Reality Revolution. He was the host of the first annual Reality Con, and he has allowed me to come to his group and, and do some meditations. The Quantum Healing Collective, something that Kyle Boyd started, um, is one of the most fantastic things. They have interviewed several incredible people and they use a sort of process similar to AA where everybody seems to be involved in it. It's, it's growing and it's awesome. And if you just look through the list of people that they have interviewed, it's, it's amazing. And I, and I just want everybody to know about it. The biggest thing about this episode is everybody needs to check out the Quantum Healing Collective. It's something special, something bigger than all of us. It's growing and I think it's gonna be around forever. And Kyle has started it, and it's a way for us to interact as a group and talk about these things in a, in a really appealing way um, that's easy for us to interact. Uh, so, and then Kyle is a fantastic spiritual teacher. He's been through a lot in his life, and I can't wait to go deep and, and find out the story, the origin story behind Kyle Boyd. So welcome to the Reality Revolution, Kyle. Oh, man, thank you so much. That was the best introduction ever. And first off, thank you for everything you've done for the Quantum Healing Collective. You know, when we were really in our infancy, I reached out to you and asked you if you'd want to be on and you didn't even think twice. You just came on. And then I followed it up and was like, hey, would you guide a group meditation? You didn't even think twice. You said yes. And that really, you know, it allowed us to get some credibility, allowed us to have a lot of fun with you. And, and since then, it's kind of just been it's taken off. Um, but you know, to bring it back to the roots, um, that's not how it was for me back in the day. You know, uh, there was a lot of fear. Um, I was addicted to fear as a kid. Um, I can go more into that process, but yeah. basically like from a, from a large scale, I was addicted to fear. You know, I covered it up, um, with alcohol and then 12 years later I got funneled into the, the programs and then my life changed you know it's interesting in the spiritual mm. community you meet mm. a lot of people that have overcome drug abuse alcoholism mm. uh, that have been in in those aa rooms mm. right um yeah. and, and, and i i think that there's 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 a a deep emptiness sometimes that we're seeking to fill that where we we find these spiritual avenues and it's part of the process it's a very common thing uh yeah. you know you, you have to overcome your own will yeah. and desires and emotions when you are addicted to anything and i could mm. see that you know from so tell me a little bit more i mean uh yeah. i i of course uh, you know I've, I've been to aa meetings and it's yeah. something i never i love the structure of an aa meeting it forces mm. a sort of interaction Mm. And you end up, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not, you're going to end up meeting some people and you're going to and you're, and end up, it's a comfortable way to communicate. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, I never found success with it because when I stood up and said, I am mm. an alcoholic, I didn't want to say I am. Mm. The, 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 mm. My point was when I stood up and said, I am an alcoholic, I'm not an alcoholic. I quantum <laughs> yeah. jumped into a reality where I'm not, I don't drink, I don't think about it. Um, but maybe mm. I'm wrong. Everybody's a little bit different. It, it helps. But so let's start with that. Tell me about your journey through addiction mm. and how it led you to this point. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, that was great. Um, you know, Joe Dispenza talks a lot about the think feel loop. Uh, I think you're familiar, but yeah. you know, for me um, at a young age, it really starts there where um, I was thinking and feeling emotions um, and thoughts that weren't probably in my best interest. And it wasn't for, it wasn't because anyone did anything in specific, but you know, I'll just give you an example. I was going to private school um, where people told me what to believe. Um, and then I switched to go to public school where the kids there made fun of my old, you know, process that I was being told to follow. So that created all this confusion. And so from a neurological standpoint, I'm thinking, thoughts and then releasing the chemical of fear into my body 
Um, and because I'm feeling fearful, the chemical of fear is in my body. I'm thinking more fearful thoughts, which is causing me to release more of the chemical of fear into my body. Think more fearful thoughts, release more of the chemical of fear into my body. So I was kind of like a walking fear junkie at a real young age, you know, yeah. um, living by the hormones of stress. And because I'm fearful, um, I'm trying to control everything in my life because I'm trying to control everything in my life and things aren't going exactly how I want them to. I'm getting angry at everyone in my life. Now I'm thinking angry thoughts, releasing those chemicals, you know, um, because I'm living angrily, fearfully and controlling, I'm not feeling optimal. So now I'm shameful, guilty, you know, like yeah. really nothing started it that was profound. Like, right. I just got addicted to the hormone distress. I, and I, I, I'm with you on that. It's an, it's a neurological adaptation that we start it, it, mm. it clicks in on a regular habitual basis we get yeah. we realize we don't want it but our body doesn't it just becomes addicted to it yeah. it, 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 it is when you wake up and you i'm fearful about this i need to worry about my job i need to worry about this i need to worry about that boom the cascade mm. of fear and it's not enjoyable it's kind of like back in the day when i would smoke cigarettes i never yeah. enjoyed a single cigarette yeah. but but i i was still addicted to it can't get right? out of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I, I can't tell you, I really enjoyed any time I smoked a cigarette, you know? Right, 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 right. But you get addicted to things that you hate. And you have so much of that chemical stored in your body that you're mm -hmm. then attracting more reasons to justify its existence. So because I have so much fear stored in my body, I'm sending out that vibration, attracting more things to be fearful of in my life. So now I'm blaming everybody in my external environment for how I'm feeling. But it's really me sending that out, you know? Right. Um, we have to detox ourselves yeah. from the fear chemical. How do we How do we do that? Because we, we, we can detox something that we're taking, like alcohol, we drink, just stop drinking. Eventually, yeah. eventually uh, it'll come out of the body. But the, the fear chemical is produced by the brain. It's always there. Kind of like trying to, you can't quit food if you're addicted to food. Right. If you're addicted right. to fear. It's a yeah. tough addiction to overcome. 100%. It's, it's the toughest. And I'd say, you know, that's, that is the addiction, I think, you know, from like a worldwide perspective. Yeah. That, so, so the reason I brought that up is because when I went to AA, um, I thought I was there with an alcohol problem. And it was like, when I started doing the work in the big book, it says that uh, selfishness in the form of fear resentment and dishonesty is the root of the problem right so in that moment i was like damn there's way more work to do than you know you see so many people come in they quit booze and they think the job's done but if you haven't got to that root you just it's the same thing you're just going to be back in, in a matter of time or miserable you know right so so that was like the start of it for me is realizing that okay i have this addiction to fear um and the, the thing is, is that they have a program laid out where you actually look at those things and it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was mentioning how I, I had this, I, I actually didn't mention it, but I had a resentment against a higher power. So I had a resentment against God. I mean, I hated everything, but God was one of the things I specifically hated. And the reason was, is because people told me I had to believe this certain way, you know, like this is what you have to believe in and or else bad things could happen to you you know what i mean and, and that's like there was just so much attached to it that i didn't enjoy that it shut me off entirely so when i come into the program and they say you can believe in whatever you want to believe in um that was like the start of of my renewal you know i went from being closed off to the spirit because i hated the spirit because i was told what the spirit had to be to now being told in these programs, come up with a power greater than yourself. That's whatever you want it to be. That broke the shackles. Mm -hmm. And that, that was like the doorway for me to get out of that selfish route. Um, so that was like, boom, now, now I'm like, all right. So I go from drowning out my, my sub, my, my feelings with substances for 12 years. I'm coming into the hall, still addicted to fear, but when I got in touch with that power and turned my will over to that power, because that's what the process entails, I started feeling emotions I had never felt before in my entire life. I remember going for a run 
and just like looking at the moon, listening to the song about nature. And I just started crying. Like it was just starting to flow. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the next step in the process, after you turn your will over is, um, look at all those emotions. So, I mean, this is miraculous and anybody can do this. Um, but you learn in these programs, how to master your resentments. So you look at every single one of your resentments and ask, where was I selfish? Where was I self-seeking? Where was I fearful? Where was I dishonest? Underneath every single resentment is always a fear. So I realized that all my anger was because of my fear. And when it came to looking at the fear, I wrote down all my fears. And then I, I traced them back to the first time I remember them ever happening in my life and how they affected me since. So we master our resentments, but we outgrow our fears simply by holding them in consciousness and giving them to a power greater than ourselves. I mean, if that's not a hell of a, you know, program like that. Yeah. So that, that was it. Right. And, and so you see this kid um, who goes from being addicted to fear his whole life, who can't get out of his own way. Every girl's leaving him because he's just a bad dude, you know, go cycling through friend groups you see that kid now he's glowing you know mm -hmm. and people in my life wanted that and uh people who weren't alcoholics or addicts you know yeah. so some people who were alcoholics and addicts i started to help you know you go through the, the the whole steps and you become a sponsor and all that but there were people like my mom um my sister who were like damn it would be awesome to have a community like you have um a to, to a program like you have but i'm not an alcoholic or an addict and that became the seed that was planted in me personally into create the quantum healing collective exactly why can't we use that amazing structure mm. uh, because what it does and, and and i know you'll agree with me is that it really taught me to think outside of myself in another way and yes. you know, becoming a sponsor helping someone else Think, you know, it, 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 it's a, it's, it's yeah. a huge change. Yeah. Once you see that you can help somebody else with all the stuff that you've been through, and then you're mm. helping someone else go through the same thing. It's mm. so powerful, so wonderful. People can still help other people, yeah. even if you've never been addicted to anything. And that's why, that's why this yeah. the, the group yeah. is such a great and, and wonderful idea. And, mm. and people are sharing wisdoms that they are getting. I want to go back to what you said, because I want to have a, it's some, it's something I've thought about having an episode about. Yeah. Um, and people are afraid to sort of talk about it because it, it, it has those from our childhood. But there are people that go through this phase where they hate God. Yeah. And that sounds terrible. As soon as I say it, oh, we don't want to talk. But it is a real thing. And mm. it, it happens because you create your own reality. God is going to give you whatever you think about, right? Yeah. So you yeah. have all this bad stuff happening. How could mm. God, God do this for me? How could mm. God do this to me? Uh, you know, and then th it's a real process that people go through. People have this thought. And, and, and so it, it, it's, I see it all the time, especially with, with addicts, but even beyond that, um, people start to hold a sort of disgust or hatred towards the, the higher power, mostly because of the way it's been defined at, in, in our lives and we, a misunderstanding of it. Mm. But, but I want to talk, what, what is your impressions of that? And yeah. it, it affects yeah. you while you're going through this, this anger, right? Oh, a hundred percent. And uh, I would say like the, the, the biggest emotion that I had towards God was fear. Like as a kid, so I was going to private school um, where it was strict. Like you believed in God. If you didn't, um, if you didn't behave appropriately, you, you, I mean, hell was in the conversation, you know? And so mm -hmm. that was like, that was where, where I was coming from. So it's like, basically just the fact that I was vibrating the emotion of fear had me curled up in a ball, actually not really wanting to listen to any of it. Like it was hard for me to hear the good things mm -hmm. because I was so scared of the bad things. And there were incredible principles underlying you know, um, that system, you know, there, there are some incredible principles there, but I couldn't hear them because I was so fearful of, I associated it not only, not only with the system, but the messenger, like the people that were telling it to me, um, 
you know, like the teachers. I was scared shitless of my teachers, mm -hmm. you know? So I didn't want to hear the entire thing. So I closed off. And now when you close off, you, you know, when you're on this ripping and running, you know, dark stage of your life, you're closed off. And for me, when I was closed off, I, I didn't know that I could open that door again. I just thought it was shut forever. Like, I'm not going to be religious. I'm not going to be spiritual because I didn't know there was a difference in my dark stages between spirituality and religion. But what happened for me was I went to the University of Hawaii. And oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, I went there for a year. I actually, you know, I, 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 I went place. there. I went there to actually escape. You know, everyone in my yes. life knew the gig was up. And so that's the only place I could use without anybody knowing what I was doing, you know? And uh, so I'm over there and um, I did this trip to the island of Maui and I was blessed. It was, it was a uh, community service project where we were building this rock wall. Um, the Hawaiians used to, from the mountaintop all the way to the ocean, would hand bolt like rocks, huge rocks, one by one. They'd line the whole community all the way up to the top. And then they would build these rock walls out in the ocean and they would place them in a certain uh, angle, then put these fish nets down so that fish came in but couldn't leave. So we were, it was like their ecosystem. Um, it, it was how they, they caught food. But anyway, uh, this, this native named Vene was teaching me all the native Hawaiian traditions for this week that I was there. He was like this guy I looked up to. And his religion, his faith system was worshiping nature. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it did something to me. I didn't know what it did at that moment. But I realized that what this guy was talking to me about, I loved deeply. And it kind of started to open that door where I was like, this guy's system of belief is one I can get behind. I love what this guy's talking about. I didn't go, I didn't make the correlation directly that this could be my new faith system. Um, but it planted some seeds. So then when I, when I found out that I could come up with a power greater than myself, um, I started, the, of, of my own understanding, I just started listing all the things that I believe to be powers greater than myself. And a lot of them ha happened to be the ones that Benet taught me about, like the moon, the sun, the stars, the universe, you know, the infinite, all these things. I just basically said whatever made, made those things up, I want that to be my higher power. And once I did that, you know, once I opened the door again, the floodgates came in and my whole life changed forever. And it's been incredible ever since. That's amazing. So at some point you started to meditate. So at some point yeah. you started to meditate. Tell me about that journey from essentially, <laughs> it sounds like you were in Catholic school or some kind of very. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I okay. was, yeah. And so, so then you went from that where in some some Catholic schools, meditation is is evil or it's frowned upon. It's not looked, yeah. you know, not all of them, but. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, I wasn't meditating back then. Um, you know, the first form of meditation I think I had was playing basketball for 11 hours mm -hmm. a day. That's how I found my escape. For some reason, just that process was really therapeutic for me. But when I came out of, um, when I came out of, you know, rehab and all these things and I started getting in con connection with a higher power um I was like glowing and people in my life knew I was glowing um so they started sending me opportunities and at first the first one that came up was I don't know if it was my mom but somebody sent me Deepak Chopra's 21 day meditation mm -hmm. and I was like yeah I'm gonna do this and really what I was doing was I was just listening to his cool words I was taking his quotes, sending them to all my friends and like, yeah, I got the, you know, <laughs> I'm meditating now, you know? And, uh, but my monkey mind was still running wild. Um, it wasn't until my friend in the halls, I had read Power of Now. And after I read Power of Now, I was kind of starting to like slow down and be more in the moment. But my buddy heard me talking about Eckhart Tolle and he was like, hey, you need to meet um, Kristen. And Kristen happens to be the co-founder of the Quantum Healing right. Collective. Um, but I go over to her house one day um, and that was one of those moments that changed my life. But she was already on the beam. Um, she does these crystal bowls. And in the moment we did these crystal bowls, I started like 
I can't even explain, but it was a release like I had never felt before. And that day we made a pact to read Joe Dispenza's Becoming Supernatural. Mm -hmm. So to get back to your question about meditation, in that book, he talks about how um, basically Buddhist monks have known this forever, but when you focus on space, um, the space that something takes up in space, you go from beta to alpha. And mm -hmm. you go from the highly analytical mind to the creative mind. So when that happened, um, I that was my doorway to meditation. Anybody mm -hmm. who struggles with meditation, I ask, I, I recommend trying that because that's what worked for me. I was not able to meditate, but as soon as I went into alpha, alpha was was my doorway to then deeper levels of meditation. So I started off with his body parts meditation where you just literally focus on your body parts and i was coming out of that so zen out um i kept reading his book uh and th there's a chapter in there on heart coherence so i started um now that i'm deeper in meditation and now that i'm able to do these heart coherence when i learned about heart coherence and i started practicing heart coherence meditations it was another another game changer for me um so for me heart coherence is how i practice the selflessness it's how i practice the emotions that are opposite of my selfish root you know so it's like if fear resentment um you know shame pain guilt are my root heart coherence is the bridge that allows me to enter the emotions that are the opposite of that um, like gratitude, appreciation, wholeness. So all heart coherence really is, is rhythmic breathing through the heart, um, which causes you to go in the state called coherence, where everything harmonizes your body, your mind, your soul, you know, you know this, but mm -hmm. at that point, 1200 biochemical changes happen in your body that promote growth and repair. You're feeling blissful. Um, so heart coherence for me was like this practice, um, of feeling elevated emotions and by simply practicing feeling elevated emotions i was changing my state and i was becoming an entirely new person so i went from um <laughs> to get back to your question at the beginning about meditation started off with going from beta to alpha then i started heart coherence which i became so obsessed with that i went to the institute of heart math got certified as a heart math coach I started telling everyone in my life about heart coherence. Um, I send out like 21 day heart coherence challenges to all my friends, you know, like I, I got everyone in my life hooked up on heart coherence. I think that's how you found my meditations. That is how I found your meditation. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I just typed in heart coherence and yours was the first one that popped up. You oh, and wow. uh, Ken Pataki. Um, and when I did it, so that's to, to bring to your point about how did I meet you? I was doing these heart coherence challenges and I put like 40 different heart coherence meditations that I found on YouTube into a playlist. And I sent them to all my friends and I said, we're gonna do these for 21 days. Just pick one a day that you like and just do one a day for 21 days. And by the end of it, people were doing yours multiple days in a row and Ken Pataki's multiple days in a row. So I was like, I got to reach out to Ken Bataki and I got to reach out to Brian Scott. So you're the first people I reached out to um, for the Quantum Healing Collective. But to right. bring it back to the meditation. So then um, in the in the Joe Dispenza, I just followed pretty much Joe Dispenza's, um, mm -hmm. you know, his evolution of meditation <clears throat> in his book, which brought me to shooting cerebral spinal fluid up my spine, putting pressure on my pineal gland, you know, um, and now I'm releasing all these metabolites that cause me to have these incredible experiences. I'm seeing five dimensional pyramids. Um, I'm seeing you, you've even on. had, and some of my meditations, you've said you've seen like entities come in and tell you to, to join you, right? You had, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when we were doing the, uh, I think it was the quantum jump meditation, yeah. um, I had Metatron and I didn't know who Metatron was. I've never studied archangels or anything like that, but I had this little fairy, you know, right after like you, you do the breathing and then you're in mm -hmm. like this Zen spot. I had this fairy come to me and it said, you're pretty much, you're coming with me. Surrender. Um, like it's your time to come with me. 
and <laughs> I I jumped out of it, and uh, I was like, hell no, I'm not going with you. Right. I'm not ready for that. You know, I went. I wish I surrendered to see where I went, but I was just so like blown away. The next day, the next morning, um, I went on Facebook, and Kristen the night before had painted Metatron, and oh, wow, I was like, who is that? That's the guy that showed up trying to take That's me away last night. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's like, yeah, this is Metatron. I'm like, Have you been able to travel outside of your body at all? Any sort of astral projection? Um, I leave my body. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would say yes. When mm-hmm. people explain it or ask me that, I have a hard time understanding. Like I, I become one with uh, the void. And then I go places. So if that's astral projection, right. yeah, you know, but I've just never really studied it enough to know if I am or not, you know? Right. Well, anybody that that follows my channel knows that I love Dr. Joe and I use a lot yeah. of his concepts and techniques and mm. try to expand on them. And one of the things he talks about, which is done in a different way because, it, you know, the void, you know, yeah. the, it, mm. it, it, the void has been talked about in Buddhism and a bunch of other people. Uh, but he kind of brought it into the quantum and kind of explained on a, mm. on what's actually the physics of, of the void and how it has to be. And the con yeah. and, and once I started really exploring the void, it was a game changer for me. Yes. Uh, you know, mm. there's something about, you need to kind of clear, it's like, uh, you need to cl- clear the board before you can start playing the game. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, oh, 100%. and and it really feels like that with it, as soon as I bring anything into it, then it's not the void. The void is letting go of everything for yeah. a given period of time. How long should we stay in the void? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a part of me that I could just hang out in the void for hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? But isn't it so healing? You know, yeah. it's, it's a spot to be. I did. A, a, one of my sleep meditations is going into a black hole. I designed it mostly for myself. It didn't. It wasn't that popular, but uh, check it out. you 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 take a spaceship to to this main black hole, and then you mm. go into the black hole, and then mm. for most of the sleep period, you're in the black hole. You know what I'm saying? I have to um, do this. <laughs> but yeah, it, the the void. I wanted. You know, what have you had any experiences with the void? Yeah, you know, the void is is incredible, and and uh, he has a. Um, a meditation called space time where it's specifically designed yeah. to like teach you how to hang out in the void when i hang out in the void that's like the magic carpet where everything unfolds you know when you when you hang out there your life's gonna change and i was right. actually thinking about it today i was like i gotta spend more time in the void because i do a lot of like breath work and stuff but when i specifically hang out in the void yes whatever yeah exactly you know and i'll tell you though brian this is the honest truth and I'd be lying if I, your meditations are so profound that my life was changing so quickly that it scared the crap out of me in certain <laughs> times. You, you know it. Like yeah. I, I jumped to alternative that. realities that I wasn't ready to jump to. And uh, so I'm, I'm more cautious now. I like took a step back with my meditations just because, yeah. you know, it, the magic's real you know yeah, like, i get that i used to love to imagine houses mm-hmm. that i was going to live in really detailed and i have a fear of moving yeah. like, next thing you know i was doing this and i was like sorry brian your lease has been canceled you know i'm finding the house that i imagined yeah but it was like so painful i'm scared to death to to <laughs> think about a house now like i like i start having it no 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 don't think about that because i yeah. or you know sometimes there's consequences to some of the mm. stuff that we imagine we don't think mm. through you know i have to think mm. on a bigger level but um yeah. it, it's interesting i was uh reading some walter russell to help me understand mm. the void and also life after death we mm. think that life is movement, right? We mm. think that life mm. is action and movement. The mm. heart is beating, but it, mm. we obviously came from the void. The void yeah. is where all life comes from and it's all life goes. That is where life is truly. Yeah. We're just experiencing a brief respite from life. The void is where life is. There's no other way. It couldn't have come from anywhere else. There is the void, right? So. Oh, hundred percent. And to bring it back to uh, like the, the program and stuff, um, I had somebody say to me recently after I finished uh, speaking, 
um, at one of my anniversaries because I love mm-hmm. the programs. I'll always be a part of right, like, right. those programs as well as the Quantum Healing Collective. But somebody said to me like every year, Kyle, you are a brand new person. And uh, he's like, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to even know who you are. And at first I was like, damn, like, that's not cool. Like, why would you say that? And then when I thought about it, I was like, that is the coolest thing that anyone could say to me. And the reason um, I think it's applicable to me is because of that, like Joe Dispenza line where he says, when you become nothing in nowhere at no time, Mm -hmm. then you can become anything anywhere Mm -hmm. at any time. And, you know, so, so many people come into uh, like the programs and they're so hung up on their past. Like you were saying, you don't like saying I'm an alcoholic because you don't, and I get this. And, And this was, you know, part of the reason we created the new fellowship, but um, they're so tied to that past that it prohibits change in a way. And so when I realized that I could forget all that in the void, you know, become nothing at nowhere in no time, that's when you can truly begin to create whoever you want to become. And when you realize that, when you experience it, it's like blast it's, off. It's one know? of the most profound revelations of mm. doing these void meditations is yeah. that my reality is created by my past. Like I'm, I'm everything that I have in my life is created by this ongoing memory I have of the past, which doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. All the stuff mm-hmm. in the past is gone. It's just memory. It's just a, a data bit inside of my mind. And yeah. so if, if there is a version of me, that's a billionaire, that billionaire probably has a different past. Right. So some of these versions that I would love to experience things that, you know, vacations, mm-hmm. I want to think I could not experience them if I existed within my current memory of my past and yeah. having to let go mm. of my past and say it doesn't matter like all that stuff doesn't matter it it's a big thing that we, we you, you talk about i mean the great thing about aa is the forgiveness aspect going around mm. making amends mm. because mm. those memories stick with you like mm. glue these things that you did when you were basically insane <sighs> right yeah yeah. If you don't address them, they keep on coming up. They keep on coming mm. up because mm. that's just how the mind works. And so there's two, if, if, if for some people that may not work, but the void is still what we're trying to work towards, letting that stuff go. And you can mm. let stuff go yeah. in the void. Some yeah. people still are always going to be stuck with their past. But when you understand that even if you had the worst past, you're the worst person in the world and you had the mm. craziest, worst things happen. If you mm. were able to just forget about them yeah so that, yeah. that makes me wonder sometimes maybe some cases dementia is not a bad thing yeah no i agree and sometimes people you, need to forget yeah yeah and, and what's weird about uh like my experience is that when i look back on the person i was like i actually don't even relate to that as being me mm-hmm. and i I, I'm not even sure that it was, you know, like I can't really yeah. relate to that person and I can't relate so much that I actually can't say it was me. Like it, it almost yeah. is really like looking at an entire different being on. If you, if you really think about it, your yeah. body is replacing all of its cells over a given period of time. If you did some terrible thing in the past, many of us have, many of us are locked in and they have, as soon as I said that, I bet people are watching, just remember yeah. that terrible yeah, thing yeah, yeah. they did. <laughs> it's so terrible. Maybe nobody knows, uh, yeah. you know, that stuff, it, it, it pulls you down. It drags you down forever. If, but that wasn't you, right? That was some other person with an entirely different body. Imagine if we wake up, like we really didn't experience all of it. Mm, what if we mm. just woke up this morning right now we're in our body all the other stuff we think we've been experiencing all this time but it's Mm. just it's a memory pattern and we're experiencing it today right now in this Mm. moment we were okay this is how are you going to respond when you have this memory yeah right what if that's true how do we know that we experienced yesterday (laughs) yeah I, sometimes I wonder that we myself. don't we, I, I just don't have a memory of talking with you and doing all the, maybe that wasn't me but maybe that's just part of the program mm. and now I'm uh, now I'm in this moment how do I respond mm. so we it's absolutely urgent for us to understand our past and our memory and understand mm. that you mm. know that's why I think that revision is such a powerful thing with with Neville Goddard yeah. the idea that you imagine that it was different mm. powerfully mm. enough with emotion so that you lock it in and then suddenly everything starts to happen as if that thing mm. happened. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's something that I kind of chose to do when it came to uh, like the resentments and the fears. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to sit with them in Joe Dispenza's uh, body parts because there's a part in that meditation where he says, all right, now there is a light within you that's that's trying to like basically rewrite your past. And it's it subconsciously programs you to just forget about all that stuff. Um, right. You have to bring it up. You got to bring it, it up to let it go. Let, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that, at least that's my experience with it. And it worked. I don't feel guilty about my past. Right. We have this thing where we the stuff we never deal with it just mm. pushes down it comes back up it, yeah. it comes back up in our memories it comes back up in our actions it comes back up in our resentment so many things yeah so that's the beauty of the program is that mm. it forces you to acknowledge this part mm. of your past in order for me to forget it i can't just forget it yeah right. maybe it's the way the brain works yeah. uh it's, if it was so easy for us to just forget our past mm. you know maybe it wouldn't work but how do you forget something does that make sense? Because yeah. anytime you put even a little bit of attention towards it, yeah, it's going to flourish and grow. Yeah, it's almost like you forget by holding it in the light and then changing your perception or something. Imagine, you know? maybe I should do a meditation where we take our past and, yeah. put it toward, and let the light just dissolve it. I love it. I, that would be powerful, man. That I would think be that very I'd be the next powerful. one. I'd, I'd, <laughs> yeah. Dissolving so, the past, right? So, uh, so that um, brings me to kind of like, you know, how we came up with the Quantum Healing Collective was mm -hmm. so that day um, when I met Kristen, she had a whole different experience. Um, she was sitting on the top of the mountain, man. You know, she's, an, she's truly like an enlightened being. Like at this point in my life, she was the most enlightened being I had ever met, like buzzing, vibrating at a high, you know, not to go too much into what is an enlightened being, but whatever. Mm -hmm. She was glowing. And she was having a positive effect on me, but her route to the top of the mountain, um, how she got clean was not the traditional way. She took uh, ayahuasca and mm -hmm. ibogaine, and though so so she's enlightened, and that's how she got there. But those truths wouldn't exist in a program like, you right. know, like that that you know, and that's right. nothing to say bad about the program. But those truths just probably aren't allowed there. And that's okay. But it's like, how do we create a program where that those truths are? Okay. And that became the start of it. And and so her and I like made it like our pact that day um, that we were going to try to create a community and that we wanted to surround ourselves with spiritual people where it was just okay. It doesn't matter how you're coming here. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what your beliefs are, but it's like, it's okay. If you want to be spiritual, if you have a desire to grow, it's okay. And mm -hmm. um, so we did this man ma uh, meditation that day to manifest a place. And all of a sudden the quantum health and wellness center in Seekonk, Mass magically unfolded. And Kristen's family and her operate that now. So it became like our center like so oh, that's where yeah. like everyone in our neck of the woods goes for healing for yoga for everything man it's like truly the most incredible place so she's like killing it locally um i go there all the time um i think i need to like, have Kristen on next on, on the you program. have to man <laughs> honestly dude she's she's my sister like and she's yours she too, sent me you that know? cool shirt too that, yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah. you'll love it yeah so yeah. um so anyway, we like go our way for a while where she's doing that. I'm going to the Institute of Hard Math and we're kind of like, just like being done by the universe to come up with this equation for the program. And um, we finally decided we were gonna have the meeting uh, with the, the requirement for membership being a desire to grow. And we wanted to start each meeting with uh, the heart coherence science um because what that does is it automatically puts you in the frequency of healing it raises mm -hmm. everyone's vibration um you know we move ourselves to experience and gratitude wholeness appreciation and then we invite a new speaker uh just to share something they think will promote growth in the collective so we were having these meetings in person at the the quantum wellness center mm -hmm. uh and 
I don't know if you've ever done like live heart coherence meditations with people, but it's different. We would, we would, I would guide the group in the heart coherence and every single time you would feel the room go into coherence. So we'd all get there. Everyone would, would be arriving with their own stories is that we would do the coherence, heart coherence, and everybody became one or like orchestrated symphony, one organism collectively having a heartbeat. I don't know if you're familiar with entrainment, mm -hmm. but the heart rhythms of everybody, we were actually becoming one organism and our meetings, you know, someone would get up there and share and then we would flow so incredibly. And then Kristen would end each meeting with the crystal bowls. People were leaving there deeply healed. And first of all, I just want to say like the spiritual community that we have is second to none. We have the most incredible people. All of our friends um, are just the best people in the world, man. Uh, but we went from like five people, 10 people, 20 people, and then COVID hit. And then once COVID hit and we decided we wanted to go uh, online, it like opened the doors to us reaching out to people like you. And now we have like the best spiritual people in the world coming and speaking and we don't have any restrictions it's basically like we just want to hear how you got to the top of the mountain share that with our community then we'll have questions and answers but right. it's, it's been incredible man <laughs> i mean I, I just while you were saying that i could see just like aa i yeah. could see this group in every community i could yeah. see a quantum health collective just look it up in your phone book there's a quantum health collective nearby. It doesn't need to have speakers. It's just, mm. it could be a place for people to, you know, I, what I, I, I talk about a lot on my um, channel is the, the idea of the social memory complex, the mm. idea that in the, mm. as you move to this new earth, there's this theory, there's a group mind that forms, but it's hard to understand because group minds can be a bad thing. We saw it in the capital, right? Sometimes a group mm. forming a mindset can, they can get caught up in, in the, heat of the moment and, and it's just all bad but yeah. there is something going on when 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 there is the, the heart is at a different level the the, mm. the consciousness is at the level of the heart where we're outside of ourselves in a group mm. where we it's almost like we're thinking the same thoughts yeah it's almost yeah. like we're feeling the same feelings mm. uh and it's something that we can choose to tap into and i think yeah. it's going to get bigger and bigger and maybe, maybe not in our lifetimes, but there's gonna be a point in time where thousands of people are knowingly going into these group yeah. consciousness environments. And mm. it's going to change the physical fabric of the earth. Yeah, in a yeah, way I can, that I can say unstoppable. Like, 100%. And I'll just tell you, like, the, since we started these meetings, the synchronicities between our group members, like I was saying about the Met Metatron, but like that stuff happens all the time where it's like, I'll be thinking about one of my members and then I'll immediately text me, you know, and that's happening with everybody. We're just like intuitively connected now that we're doing all these things so frequently. We're truly a family, man. And uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of cool. Like, you know, I, I, are you familiar with mind movies at all? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So mind movies, when I was, when I first got into recovery, um, and this is one of the other reasons why I wanted to start a program like this was like, I, I was becoming spiritual, but I realized that not necessarily everybody in the program is spiritual. A lot of kids were still into like, you know, just, they just wanted to hook up with girls. They just wanted to gamble. They just wanted to this or that. So I made it a priority of mine to surround myself with spiritual people. And that was like my biggest goal in life was just mm -hmm. to create, you know, an external environment that made me as healthy as possible. So I put in my mind movie, the whole basis of one of my mind movies was to surround myself with spiritual people. And I'm just blown away, man. Now that they just keep, they keep showing up, you know, it's, it's isn't like, it a truth though. I mean, I, you know, I, I have a friend that is, a family friend that's a rancher and he says when they mm. when the cows hang out they can see the genetic similarities so when yeah. human beings are um, mm. when you're around people they affect you mm. as much as you don't want them to mm. if you're around that somebody that's super negative super angry insane that yeah. insanity will seep into your consciousness uh, it, some mm. people they're in a very unfortunate family situation where they can't escape they're with somebody that's so overbearingly bringing up fear um mm -hmm. it's tough but I, I see what you're saying i think that if you make it your intention 
Mm. The good, positive people come into your life. It will change your life. Their energies will change you. It's not just about being around some cool people every once in a while. It, 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 it'll change you. 100%, man. And, and like, really, like, I'm, I'm just kind of like a vehicle for one component of it. But it's taken all of us to a better place where we're like truly now pulling each other up in all mm -hmm. aspects of life where it's like everybody in, in the circle is incredible and like just shining. And like, so for example, I, I do not necessarily love, I won't say I don't love, but my program from childhood is not in alignment with healthy eating, but because I'm surrounding myself with people that eat healthy, I find myself now doing green shakes and stuff like that, where it's like, right. because that's, that's my example. external, yeah, like all of a sudden, I just want to be the best me. And because the people around me are the best me, like doing the best they can, I just kind of want to do what they're doing. You know, when I hear about something new that somebody's doing that's making them shine, I want to do it too. And right. like everybody in our group is just truly trying to become the best version of themselves. And they're willing to go to any lengths. Including like, cold baths, you're going in. We like, do cold baths, yeah. So yes, now we now that. we do group cold baths where we all meet up and uh, you know we go to new spots and we all just will submerge and uh, and it's a blast, man. It's I'm, cool I'm so do. tempted to buy one of those freezers to put yeah. in my backyard. I'm this close. I'll um, do it. You know, it's probably. Got, you know, I know all the techniques and procedure, but um, yeah, you know, just the, it's my the favorite food. practice. The yeah. few times I've done it, um, it's a, it's mental. When I've yeah. done it, uh, my mind is so clear. Yeah, my mind is so clear. If especially if I do it after meditation and just go yeah. in and go cold bath and, um, yeah, I go pretty much every day. And, and oh, I heard wow. it. I heard. Uh, yeah, it's a part of my like ritual. But I heard Aaron Dowdy. Yeah, one yeah. Time say like, you want a spiritual hack? Number one thing to do is take cold baths. And I remember him like in the shower filming and i'm like dude this guy's crazy but i like again i just want to be the best version of myself so if he's doing it i'm gonna do it and i started I, doing I it i texted him he told me which freezer to get i can send it ah, send nice. you his recommendation nice. that's so cool yeah, <laughs> yeah. i think it's I no no there's something to it and so yeah you, you were gonna you have you you're gonna still have wim wim hoff you, you reached well, out so yeah i talked to uh laura hoff um his daughter and she was like yeah just give us uh, a shout in the new year and we'll get back to you and we'll set something um, up. So no, I was like, that's exciting, what? man. You know? Yeah. And you have Bruce Lipton coming, Bruce right? Bruce Lipton's coming. Yeah. He's coming uh, February, I think 22nd. So you've had some amazing guests yeah. and, and, and each time you're adding to your knowledge. I mean, tell me something that you've learned from your guests that really has been mind blowing that, you know, that you wouldn't have learned without um, this participation with these wonderful teachers that you, you brought in. You know, what's funny is that literally after every single meeting, pretty much every single meeting, my friends and I will text each other um, and we'll say that was the best meeting ever, you know? Yeah. And, and I just feel so blessed. Like, you know, yesterday we had this meeting, um, Sunday we had this meeting and um, it was this lady named Joanne from New Zealand and she was teaching us active dreaming. So she was teaching us um, this technique we can use to get in touch with like spiritual animals for signs. And I was like, you know, if you told me this five years ago, it was woo. -woo. But all of a sudden I had this owl massaging my neck and then a fox was taking me down this hole. And then I popped out and she was telling me what that meant in my life. And I'm just like, you know, if the one thing that, that kind of does blow my mind is that it is common thread, you know, of what I hear all these different spiritual people say mm -hmm. is that it's an inside job, you know, like that's the one thing that's, that's like, we control our futures by what the, 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 the basically the equation of our day is going to create who we become. Like, you know, uh, what we fill our lives up with is going to be what our life looks like, you know? So, mm -hmm. so for me, it's like, I have to be, able to go to any lengths to create the equation that I want to see unfold in my life, you know, and they all say that in different ways. Um, Krishna Das came on and he just, he literally said, you just got to feel your shit. <laughs> like, you know, he just came on and I was expecting something profound and that's what he said. And I was like, yeah, you know, he's right. I just got to mm -hmm. feel my shit. I can't 
stuff it in there. <laughs> you know, like we just yeah. have so many different people give messages, but it's all kind of the same thing. It's like, you just gotta, you gotta be willing to go inward. You gotta be willing to sit with your stuff um, and, and transform it. And then, you know, you have the ability to create the reality you want, you know? Right. So your daily ritual, you wake up, mm. you meditate early or you meditate later. When do you do cold? What, tell me about your daily ritual. Yeah. So my daily ritual is I wake up, I say the third step prayer, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with. Oh, but of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically God. I offer myself to you to build with me and do with me as you will. So it's just like ceremonious ritual to turn my, you know, whatever you want to call it lower self, but my ego mind just to try to get it out of the way and in touch with the, you know, that frequency that that heals us and makes us become the best version of myself i also ask it to put people in my life i can help um then i try to watch my mind movie mm -hmm. uh which i still have to create a new one but i i try to watch my mind movie every morning um then the cold shower then i kiss my kids goodbye uh the woman you know say have a good day um, and that that's actually important because like that process of like just giving my kids like love really lights me up for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. But then I go to, when I'm driving to work, I listen to an audible. I have a group of friends that we all listen to audible books um, together and talk about it. So right now we're reading Bliss Brain. We're listening to Bliss Brain by Dawson Church. So I listen to that on my way to work. Um, when I get to work. I work as coastal management officer, so it's like an environmental job. Um, when I'm there, I'm kind of focused, but on my break, I try to reach out to some kids in the program, somebody who needs help, say what's up, you know, make those connections. When I get home, often it's dad duty <laughs> and try to be as present as possible during that time. Um, it's so cool, man. My two-year-old now comes up to me and he does breathing on his own. So yesterday he came up to me, sat next to me, and he just started going. And I was like, it's a miracle, <laughs> yeah. you know? But then when I, when I, uh, when I get like, when, when I'm unwinded, I, I try to do breath work and then um, a deep meditation every night. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that usually puts me in a great space uh, going into the next day. So. It adds up, it accumulates over time mm. when you're doing it on a daily basis like that. Yeah, so that's like the uh, the baseline, but then I try to be flexible and allow for new opportunities to show up in my life, you know? Right. Not beat myself up if I step out of that. I also work out too. I didn't mention that, but I, I do some workouts whenever I can. I, I almost think that it's mandatory if you yeah. want to get something out of your if you're not working out mm. the blood flow the energy something something is lost when you don't work out i mean right. i'm super lazy I, there's a part of me that <laughs> would enjoy it but when i work out it's going to be a way different experience if i meditate uh, I than if i don't so mm. yeah yeah one thing i want to get into too in the new year is i'm kind of sending out a call to the universe to teach me practices that are ritualistic in the connection with the environment and the earth kind of like the native hawaiians do where they like ceremoniously will chant and this and that but like calling the spirits in some kind of fun way that yeah you know i'm looking for a way that kind of incorporates all the things like working out the chanting but like um the, the most nature connection i recently had was when we just started growing a garden you heck know yeah yeah. Um, and then, and then it became a spiritual thing. Like y even, even though our garden ended up kind of sucking and we, you know, <laughs> some, uh, there, I did feel connected to the, yeah. to the plants and the earth and they became important and I could feel them. Um, and so next thing you know, we had, I don't know, that's one thing that, but I, yeah, I feel yeah. you, I feel like I, I, I'm not doing enough to connect mm. to nature. Mm. And I know yeah. the importance intellectually I'll sit outside in the sun or in the garden, mm. but I do. I feel like there's there's something I'm missing. Yeah. I need to do something more to connect to mm. nature. Mm. Uh, and so I, I agree. I'm, we should both put that out there. I agree. Yeah, with that. yeah. yeah. That's uh, one of the things, too. Though It just came up because when I was doing the dream activation, the fox that I basically, she has you visualize, you know, a spirit animal that comes to you under this tree. And the fox took me, and I felt like I was riding the tail of this horse, but he took me down to the Earth's crust. And I asked 
what that meant to the, the shaman, Joanne, and she said that it means you just need to get more connected with the earth. So making that money. And I, and I know, I, I've even had, you know, parts of me say I needed to connect to the earth. And I've read some interesting things that say, if the earth is going through upheavals and terrible things, if you're connected to the earth and the sun, you, you create a reality around you, all that stuff doesn't matter. And so that, that it feels like it, it's part of what I need to do, but I, I don't know, you know? So yeah, I'll, I'll grow, I'll grow my garden, connect to the plants and animals, go on nature walks, try to spend more time camping. Uh, you know, those are things that it can help, but I, it's a really sad part of our our technology and our society now we are being separated from mm. that nature i mean i i know you probably are the same if you if you're struggling and you're really having a hard day just mm. go for a walk out yeah. somewhere where there is nothing but just nature you know what i mean yep. and yeah. you'll feel better 10 every 20 time. minutes later right every time yeah. it's, it's the best solution to whatever your problem is right 100 percent so it's it's it was an honor to to do the meditation let's do one soon uh, on the quantum health collective um so just let me know we'll we'll text it we'll we'll set one up because i'd love to join you guys again because that is my favorite thing to do those group meditations because i can Mm. feel it i've never felt that when i did (laughs) those group meditation i could feel it i could feel the rush of energy i could feel Mm. other people's thoughts it's i have something similar i like to meditate every saturday with everybody during my meditation it's always yeah. a more intense meditation because i know everybody's meditating at the same time live mm, mm. but there's yeah, something that's my about favorite. yeah i i, I <laughs> it, it, it if i do the same meditation an hour later an hour before it will not be the same so i know that i'm connecting to to a, in a, to a group consciousness mm. and so yeah we need to figure out ways that we can continue to um use this and and activate it and so yeah i'm down we got to do meditation everybody needs to check out the quantum health collective (laughs) kyle and i have both been (laughs) on the receiving end of weirdness with facebook recently yes if if you're not if he kyle's not responding to your messages or not liking your posts it's because facebook is (laughs) facebook has gone insane (laughs) now they've 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 banned me for no apparent reason i don't know why Mm. um but uh they can't stop us Mm-mm. they can do whatever they want i don't think they're i i would be really shocked if they were actually trying to stop spiritual communities you nah. always get people that say oh they're just trying to stop you you're i don't think that's it i mean why yeah i'm, I'm really confused by it because i know personally I that i don't post anything that's bad other no growth oriented stuff i just think that right now the algorithm I, I'm not matching it for some There's reason. I, AI, I don't know what it is. AI yeah. and keywords gone insane. Yeah. So, but I think you know what, man. Like, first off, I want to say thank you, like, for everything you've done again for the Quantum Healing Collective. They, like, everyone there loves you and supports your energy. So, like, that is something you can't take from us, man. We're always gonna love you, bro. Like, we know the no, truth. I'm always you know gonna love I mean? you guys. So, 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 just keep at it, man. And and whether it works on the Facebook route or it doesn't, we'll find a way, you know, and right. I'm not worried about it. Like we have this community that's grown. We'll find but a way. But if, if it does work, I think it will. I think it's all going to settle yeah. down. Join the Quantum Health Collective group on Facebook. It's a family and you, you post about new, um, new speakers. You can yeah. also check out Quantum Health Collective on Instagram. You will always post like who the new guests are coming up and yep. the Zoom password. So that's the two places to check it out. And um, you know, definitely going to reach out to Kristen. Um, yes. But I, I just <laughs> thank you so much for everything that you've done. You have helped me so much in so many things with with the convention, and <laughs> you've been there for me. You've reached out to me. You've been my sponsor. Oh, come I on, appreciate man. that. <laughs> Dude, I, I mean you, that. Man. It means a I lot, man. You. I appreciate yeah. that, and I, and I, there's no way I could properly thank you for that. But um, I can't wait for the coming year. We're going to learn so much more. We're going to keep on expanding our consciousness. There's amazing things that are happening in our future. Everything is working out for us. And I can't wait to see (laughs) how Quantum Health Collective expands and grows. And Sundays are hard for me because of my other business, but I'm going to definitely um, come on and and watch some interviews soon because it's just the group mindset's great. So 
And next time I'm around there, maybe I'll, I can go live if you ever have any live events when everything's done, you know, so. 100%, 100%, we definitely will. So I, I appreciate that. And we have some meetings on Monday, uh, like Bruce Lipton will be on Monday. So I'll just okay. keep letting you know, man. Yeah, you just keep letting me it. know. I'm we want to have you come speak too. Like uh, we had you on the meditation and stuff, but I think uh, what would be cool is just having the group ask I, you questions and answers because the group loves you. So then let's do that. That's on Sundays, right? So anytime we could set that up whenever. For we'll you. do it. We'll do it. We'll figure something out. So awesome. Thank you so much, Kyle. And thank you. Welcome to the reality revolution. Well, welcome to the reality revolution. I'm just really excited today because this is the first day that my book is released. This is it, The Reality Revolution. Worked on this for a very long time. So many of the things that I discovered along the way and I was excited to share it with everybody. tell you a little bit about it uh, I'm like everybody else I'm interacting in the world and, and starting to realize that my thoughts created reality As I did this, I started to see some major shifts in my reality. I started to explore the idea of maneuvering through parallel realities. I'm your host, Brian Scott.